video playback performance, yeah. particularly when connected via HDMI to a HD ready TV set like this one. Alright, so uh, is there any feature in that Blu-ray player that will be special for Philips compared to some of the other Blu-ray players? Uh, not right now, maybe yeah. it's, it's, it's be able to offer the Blu-ray playback functionality, yeah. but obviously we as a company have a reputation for being um, focusing a lot of our attention on picture quality, so yes. we're making sure that this set can deliver the absolute yeah. best possible quality that can be done. Because yeah. I've seen uh, uh, Philips do uh, DivX certified products uh, for normal standard resolution. Yeah. I wonder if uh, a Blu-ray player could be standard, uh, could be DivX certified also. Um, it's unlikely for the short term. Yeah. Um, this is going to be based on uh, of D on uh, Blu-ray playback, and of course Blu-ray has a lot of copyright protection. Right. Uh, applied to it. So this is purely designed so you can have uh, the best possible playback of Blu-ray discs. Alright, so let's go uh, look at the Ambilight. All right. So there's uh, Ambilight full surround. Yeah, this is a consumer experience that we've created to show what Ambilight full surround is all about. Um, Ambilight being a technology uh, that we apply on our flat TVs um, to uh, enable consumers, viewers at home to get a slightly more immersive experience. So what we've done is we've created a, a show here, um, really just to project what Ambilight's all around in, in quite an interesting yeah. way. But what's more interesting inside this dome is we have a whole array of Ambilight TVs arranged around the wall. Right. It's a very impressive uh, sight. Do you know how many uh, TVs are in there? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, no. Alright, so let's go and look uh, closely, more closely at the uh, Ambilight. So Ambilight is, has, has been, uh, when, when was it first uh, introduced? Uh, we, we introduced our first version of Ambilight in uh, 2003. Yeah. Uh, 2004 sort of time frame. Um, we're already on to uh, a fourth version of it uh, called Ambilight Full Surround. And um, if we come down here I can show you the... Uh, Alright. And here. Three different versions we have yeah. today, um, and what they do and why. All right. So the fourth generation means that the Ambilight actually has evolved. Yeah. Well, basically, the, the very first version of Ambilight was um, based on having two lights, or yeah. two lighting arrays on either side of the TV set, and basically they would work by uh, the dominant color on the TV. The second generation of Ambilight yeah. that we developed was uh, what we call Stereo Ambilight. And you'd have a different color either side. And you can see on this, this particular set here, yeah. where you have what we call three-sided Ambilight. Um, and then we have Ambilight on the top, on the left, and on the right. And yeah. the very first version, depending on what image was on the screen, you'd just get the same color or the same light color yeah. uh, either side. When we went to Stereo Ambilight, you could have a scene, say, uh, like here, where you have lots of blue at the top and, say, some green at the bottom. You'd see green on the left, blue on the right. When right. we go to this generation here, which is Ambilight Full Surround, full surround. we have an Ambilight uh, lighting array on the top, the bottom, the left and the right. Yeah. Um, we can start to spread the imagery out a, a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so now on our, our latest flat TVs, we offer uh, three different types of Ambilight. Full surround, surround, and yeah. two-sided ambulite. Is is more expensive to have the full surround? Well, it depends on our, our higher-end TV, yeah, certainly. Like so that's they they generally are more expensive, yeah. but uh, the the cost isn't necessarily the issue on, on the different versions yeah. as you go up. It's just how we apply that on our top of the range yeah. set, and you can go down. So actually, the ambulite technology. Um, uh, takes the, the color of the actual screen and puts it over on the side somehow. Basically, yeah. If I could show you on, uh, yeah. on a set over here, it's very easy way of doing it. What, uh, what Ambilight does is it 
uh, it analyzes the video signal coming into the TV set and it breaks that it signal down into the, com the, yeah. the component colors. And in this case, say we've got lots of blue in there. So the, the Ambulite system looks at the dominant color in the image yeah. and affects the, the lighting strips on either side of the set accordingly. So say you're watching a football game yeah. where you're going to see a lot of green because of the grass or you may be watching golf, for example, where you see lots of green and when the ball goes into the air you see blue for the sky. Yeah. So you can see that the dominant colors in those is going to be green and blue and it sets the colors accordingly. But the, I've seen at the press conference that the doctors recommend this for the eyes. That's correct, yes. And that's totally, like, that's approved by all doctors. Well, it's not approved by doctors, but what we have is we have uh, an American uh, eye surgeon um, yeah. who's he's done some uh, independent research for us. Right. And he's found that patients have found that the, the Ambulite actually helps relax the eyes. Yeah. And the reason for that is if you, if you have a standard TV and you're yeah. staring at that screen, you're staring at a lot of light, it's very intensive. But because the ambulite effect stretches the picture and it gives this extra glow around the set, right. um, it, it actually adds to the peripheral yeah. vision. So it actually helps you, instead of being focusing yeah. hard on one small area, yeah. gives a wider area for the eyes to focus on. And it's actually much more relaxing for the eyes yeah. in that respect. So the, the Hertz uh, refresh rate of the screen, is that the same as the ambulite? Does that follow each other? Uh, I don't think so, but I'm not, I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not uh, that much of a technical expert yeah. to, 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 to know for sure. And do, do you know if there's been uh, some uh, some research on the customers who have this, if they really enjoy it? Yeah, we do. We, we have research that's found that uh, um, once they have it, they never want to switch it off. You can switch it off if you, you want. You can switch it off. In fact, there's even a feature on, on one or two of our sets where you can actually have Ambulite on even when the TV's off. So you can right. use it for ambient lighting in your living room. But what we have found is that when, once consumers have this at home, they never want to switch it off because they, they just love it so much. And right. after a while, you, you become uh, you don't you don't become conscious that there's something changing because you've yeah. become immersed in it. And that's why we call Ambulite. It's an immersive experience All right. because it's not it, it means you're not just watching television in a, in a yeah. two-dimensional sense. You're actually watching television and something a bit more. After a while you don't really think about it. No you don't, you just yeah. you enjoy it that much that yeah. you don't really notice consciously oh it's gone to this color now, it's gone yeah. to that color. And it's only when you start thinking about it you're realizing it's changing color. Right. But you need a, a white wall behind? No, um, on, um, on, on this set you do of course, but say yeah. on this set we have on the end there, yeah. it's actually the screen is built onto a, a white board. A white board. So you can yeah. see that the effect is, is there, so you, you absolutely don't have to have it. You don't have to. Uh, and uh, actually, that's kind of like the start of the kind of a new concept strategy for Philips. Uh, there's the AMB, uh, what's it called? AMB? MBX. MBX. And that's launched here at IFA? That's correct. Yeah? Um, Should we go over there? Yeah, let's go. So, uh, we've just seen the Ambilight, and this is like the kind of in the same uh, strategy well, from it, Philips. It, yes, it's, it's basic. Uh, it's a. I suppose you could call it a close cousin of Ambilight insofar as what we've done with Ambix is create um, a new set of experiences for, in this particular application, with the gaming market. Now to use the example of Ambilight first of all, Ambilight takes television and expands it. Yeah. Creates a new experience for watching television. What Ambix does is does the same thing for, in this case for gaming. Um, what we have here in this, uh, this, this workstation are um, speakers with uh, lighting modules attached to them. These are fans. Fans? You can't see this on camera. So you can actually feel there's a, a breeze. There's a fan on. breeze yep. coming out. And then on this pad here on the keyboard is, yeah. is a vibrating strip. You can actually feel vibrations there. In the keyboard? In the, in the pad. Whoa. You see that? All right. So what happens is when you're playing a game, and for example, it might be a, uh, a game where you've got a plane flying through the air, you might feel a sensation of wind coming out of there. Ooh. You feel a breeze on your face. All right. When you see the game itself creating different lighting sensations, exactly like Ambulite down there with the televisions, you see the color will change here on this, this lighting. Right. When in games you've got lots of action, explosions, that sort yeah. of things, you'll feel the vibrations in there. All right, so it's like a rumble pack uh, for the... Exactly. But it's like in your whole... Uh, computer yeah so instead of just sitting there playing a game and, and just only looking and seeing 
you're now able to feel as well as look and see. Right. So you're adding a, a different sense experience yeah. to, to the gaming, uh, to gaming enjoyment. So this technology is especially good for games, but it's also for movies. It could be applied, yeah. I mean, if you think of any kind of application where you could give yourself as a viewer a bigger experience yeah. than simply just looking, uh, then Ambix has got it. Is yeah. from a commercial point of view, we're at the moment launching this as a as part of our PC peripherals, gaming yeah. peripherals uh, range, and all these uh, devices here will be available uh, in spring of next year in Europe. Spring. Um, this monitor, for example, is already available, but. But what does the monitor have? Well, the monitor special? doesn't have anything specific for Ambix, but it has. It's been designed for for uh, for you know, multimedia entertainment. So there's, for example, speakers built in at an angle, so you get a really close-up yeah. experience. You know, it's a slightly wider aspect screen as well. So when you put it all together as a as a package, yeah. you, know, you can see. And the there's experience. also light behind the computer, or and again, that's part of the. Um, a demonstration just or yeah that's part of the ambx technology. just behind so you have like the whole room uh, illuminating uh, yeah. according to the experience so, on the computer so we're developing a whole range of these ambx accessories that you can basically create almost tailor your own ambx experience to your own yeah. so you can add some lamps behind you if you want and exactly. bigger fans and uh, absolutely yeah and uh, put the rumble in the chair and everything yes potential is there to do that eventually that we yeah. can add I mean, because it's based on these three different senses, we can build that into other accessories. But this is the initial sort of family of Ambient products. Alright, okay. Uh, that, that's, uh, that's it. Okay. That's it, thanks.